Hi, this is episode 36 of Krongos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. It's the start of the week, and on Mondays, I like to take a complex development topic and make it easier to understand. And today I'm going to discuss JSON parsing. If you've worked with APIs or front-end applications, or if you want to, you've most likely heard of the JSON data format. JSON is short for JavaScript Object Notation, and at a high level, it's simply a way to format data into attribute value pairs. If that still doesn't make sense, here's a basic example of JSON from one of the DevCamp API courses. As you can see, the data is structured so that each element is separated by a comma, and inside each element is an attribute such as ID or title, followed by a value such as one for the ID or test blog post for the title. If you've never worked with APIs, looking at this type of code may be intimidating at first. I know it was for me the first time I saw JSON. However, it really helped me to first understand the purpose of JSON. JSON was created to be a universal data format that could be used across all languages and frameworks, which means that it actually has to be quite simple, since it has to work exactly the same way for a Ruby on Rails application as an iOS mobile app. With that in mind, let's discuss how we can practically implement JSON parsing in a real-world application. Typically, I try to keep these videos language agnostic since I want everyone to get something from them. With that being said, the syntax for parsing JSON is going to be slightly different in each language. However, the high level of process will be the same and I've outlined them in the following steps. This is what the API that we'll be working with looks like if you were to go to the URL in the browser. First, we need to call the API or JSON data. In this example, I'm using the Ruby language and the HTTP party gem to contact an outside API that I've mocked. When I run this program, it contacts the outside API and prints out all of the JSON data to the terminal, as shown here. This is a mess. If you wouldn't know where to start with implementing the code for JSON parsing, don't worry. There's actually a really nice shortcut for finding out how to pull out the data. But first, let's talk about how to pull data from a nested data source like JSON. Each language is a little different. However, it usually looks something like this. This is called the bracket syntax, and it lets you access nested levels of data within JSON data. Here's a diagram of how you can visualize the nested behavior of JSON. Here we have some user data, and each user is stored inside level one. From there, we have some high-level data on the user, such as name, email, and hobbies in level two. And inside our hobbies attribute is stored another level, level three. That includes another set of data. Usually, level one is an integer. So say we want to grab the data from the music attribute, our JSON parsing code would look something like this. Here, the first level is accessed by passing an integer, such as zero, to grab a specific user. Then, to select an attribute from level two, we're appending hobbies. And lastly, we'll chain music in order to be able to get to the third level of the JSON data. And that will return all of the user's music data. So this is great when we have a nice printed diagram of the data, but what happens in the real world when we don't have that? Well, let's go look at the data in the browser. Notice what happens when I hover over one of the attributes in Chrome. I have the JSON view Chrome extension installed. And it's actually showing me the full JSON data lookup for whatever attribute I hover over. There are a number of tools that'll help you quickly see the JSON attribute nesting. JSON view is one of my favorites and you can install it for free. Let's test this out by updating our code with a real call using the text attribute that we saw in the browser. Since I want the first data element, I'm passing the zero value to get the first JSON record returned. And from there, I'm accessing the text attribute in level two. Running this will show that it worked and it prints out the tweet. See, that wasn't that scary at all. JSON is simply a way of universally structuring data so it can be used in any language or framework. And once you've worked with it a few times, you'll see that it's a great format to work with to build applications. I hope you now have a better understanding of how JSON parsing works and how you can use it in an application.